A brief introduction to curious alignments. Pyramids, stone circles, and other sacred geometry form a mystery for the ages. Some sacred geometry is found in nature between mountains and lakes. This geometry appears in the distances and angles between them. Occasionally, humans have built their own circles and mountain-like structures to emulate and to complement the geometry that we find in nature. Occasionally, buildings and meridian lines are combined to pinpoint a sunrise. Also, mining for copper along Lake Superior, a new civilization was built over an old one. Often, temples of old cultures become religious sites for new ones. Many ancient sites remain intact, waiting for us to discover their secrets. Rediscovered sites in the Americas have been restored and are now being explored. Many sites in Europe have survived, remaining part of the local culture for millennia. We now know many of the secrets of the very famous sites, such as Stonehenge. For example, we know that Stonehenge is more than its circle of stones. We know that the site is very large and that it also has remains of a wood henge. In addition, the area that is now a World Heritage Site contains a number of ancient burial mounds. We now believe that the ancient culture traveled to Stonehenge twice each year to bury the ashes of their dead and to celebrate and feast with the living. Nearby stone foundations of more than 1,000 ancient houses have been discovered. How people built the Great Stone Circle 4,500 years ago is still debated. A similar debate surrounds the building of the Great Pyramids in Egypt. People working in the construction industry of present time claim that simple machines capable of doing the work have been known in the trade for ages. Builders in pre-Columbian Canada had knowledge of ancient geometry, as did people who built in the line temples with mountains in ancient France. The Hopewell civilization is the name given to the culture of mound builders who flourished in the Great Lakes region of America from about 500 BCE to 1300 CE. We have been finding evidence that this culture aligned their burial mounds in small and large geometric patterns. One example survives in the Chillicothe region of southern Ohio. The Hopewell appear to have aligned their complex burial mounds using strict sacred geometry. Prominently, they measured what we know as Pythagorean 30, 60, 90 degree triangles as well as 20, 70, 90 degree triangles. In addition, they incorporated a series of circles, rectangles, squares, and parallel projection lines in their layout of mounds and other burial spaces. 200 miles north of the concentration of mounds in southern Ohio, we find the remains of the massive Great Mound of the Rouge that once stood 400 feet long, 200 feet wide, and 40 feet high. Today the site is home to the Rouge complex of the Ford Motor Company. The 200 mile meridian crosses a significant latitude containing additional mound complexes and serves to create a large Pythagorean triangle that connects to present-day Cleveland, Ohio. Extending the meridian south through Atlanta, Georgia, helps to create a larger triangle 
that includes Machu Picchu, but more about this later. A curious phenomena of North America is the concentration of vortices around Sedona, Arizona. A curious phenomena in the iron-rich rocks of the Sedona area, the energy points, known as vortices, are geometrically aligned with one another. Along with subtler relationships, the major vortices align to a polar north-south meridian. This alignment forms 45 degree right triangles and a 30, 60, 90 degree Pythagorean triangle. One additional curiosity, famed American architect and geometrician Frank Lloyd Wright placed the front of his studio and home exactly 90 miles due south of the Boyton vortex. During the early 20th century, Xavier Guichard of France discovered that dozens of European towns and ancient sites have names derived from the same root name of Alaïs, an ancient name for star. Furthermore, when he passed 24 lines through a point near the town of Alaïs in France, Richard found that dozens of locations with names derived from Alaïs were situated along these lines. As I studied the star, I wondered why the area of Allah East was at the center of this complex. So, I decided to look at some old maps that date back to the decline of the Roman Empire. As I began my work by drawing a meridian line through the center point at Allah East, for reference, I also drew the Paris Rose Line, the Greenwich Meridian, and a meridian through Stonehenge. I discovered that drawing a line from Rennes Chateau through Ala East led to the observatory church alignments on Bornholm Island. The four European meridians discussed lie 90 degrees from the Great Lakes regions. The prime meridian for Michigan and Ohio starts at Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Researcher Peter Champeau discovered and drew the geometry of the Great Lakes biome centered at Sault Ste. Marie. Curiously, drawing a line from the top of the pentangle through the Sioux and through the midpoint of the base of the Pentagon at Detroit leads to the plaza at Machu Picchu, Peru. At Machu Picchu, the line anchors to the tip of what is called the Old Mountain. Northward, the line passes through the location in Detroit where the Black Stone Manitou stood, near the subsequent location of the first cathedral in Detroit. Northward, past Lake Orion in Orion Township and along to Sault Ste. Marie, there are four major points that anchor the geometry of the Great Lakes biome along the Sioux to Machu Picchu line. These are the Sioux ship locks, a point in a piece of federal forest land, a point at Orion Township, and the old riverfront at Detroit. In order to replicate the sacred geometry of the biome, we draw the William Burt Meridian and a baseline along the 42 degree 55 minute latitude. Next, we draw an offset center line that runs through the four Michigan points and extends to Machu Picchu. A connection between the Great Lakes and Machu Picchu may be that each area contain one of the four largest copper deposits mined during the Bronze Age. 
we begin to sketch the sacred geometry by inscribing a circle that passes through both the Sioux and Orion points. Next, we draw a circle of the same radius centered at the Sioux. We continue by drawing a third circle, the same size, centered at Orion. Finally, we draw a fourth and fifth circle of the same diameter as the others, and these must be tangent to our center line at the center of the first circle drawn. We drew the first three circles in order to generate Vesica Pisces. The ancient philosophy of the Vesica Pisces is to create a balanced consciousness between the golden sun and the silver moon. In practical terms, this enables us to inscribe a pair of equilateral triangles. In addition, we use our evolving geometry to create a pair of axes at the center through the circles. Now we complete what is called the Solomon's Key by connecting the endpoints of the pair of axes and splitting the square into two rectangles. This is a reproduction of an ancient drawing of an actual Solomon's Key. We use the diagonal of the rectangle from our square to generate the proportion of phi, 1.618. From the Sioux, we extend a radius equal to the length of the diagonal of one of our rectangles. Then we rotate it to inscribe a circle. The distance from the far side of our square through the center point to the edge of the circle equals the ratio of phi. Let us duplicate and move this copy of the line. Next, we use this line as a measure to draw the first inner inverse pentagon. Then, we draw a pentangle inside the pentagon. We are drawing these shapes to ensure accuracy when we extend five radial spokes from the center to locate the corners of the outer pentagon. We repeat the expansionary process by drawing an intermediate second pentangle tied down to the ends of the spokes along the circle. Next, we draw an intermediate pentagon with its corners attached to the points of the second pentangle. Now we copy the length of phi. We can do this by copying the sides of the first pentangle and move them outward in a parallel manner until their midpoints are tangent to the circle at the points of the intermediate pentangle. Finally, we draw the third pentangle within the outer pentagon. There are a number of ways to arrive at the same result. However, I find that this method works well for those with only 
a moderate knowledge of math, who seek to avoid the problems that result when faced with the curvature of the Earth. Lewis Sullivan was the mentor of Frank Lloyd Wright. Sullivan said that the law of all things is that form ever follows function. An ancient principle for the design of building complexes is to reflect the night sky. This principle has been iterated as above, so below. The Orion constellation has been reflected often, as has the path of Venus. Sir Isaac Newton observed and mapped the five-year path of the planet Venus, and his results indicate a pentangle and pentagon pattern that tips slightly to the left. Variations of this pattern have been used in the design of street plans in Washington, D.C., Detroit, Michigan, and other cities. At Detroit, we see the pattern overlaid on the system of well-beaten paths that date to the Hopewell civilization of a millennium ago. On a larger scale, we find the tipped pentangle pentagram of Venus and the reflection of Orion superimposed on the Great Lakes biome. Much remains to be studied in this region of ancient mound builders. Professor Wilbert Hinsdale produced an archaeological atlas of Michigan during the 1920s. He discovered 500 remaining mounds and evidence of another 600 that had been destroyed. A curiosity of the region is the placement of the ancient byways now known as Woodward Avenue and Grand River Avenue. These roads project to intersect the midpoints of the Pentagon sides. On a grander scale, the ten radii of the Pentagon point precisely to significant locations across the Earth. As we travel clockwise around the ten, we follow the first radius southwest. First, we pass through Oaxaca, Mexico, alongside the pyramidal ruins atop Mount Alban, and then to the small island of Rapa Nui, Easter Island. The second radius takes us to White Sands, New Mexico, a traditional Native American site for spirit quests. The third radius carries us to the midpoint between two more spirit quest sites that sit 50 miles apart from one another along the volcanic range of the Pacific coast, Mount Shasta and Crater Lake. The fourth radius takes us through the pass in Manitoba, settled by the Cree over 9,000 years ago, past the Mendenhall Glacier and out along the chain of active volcanoes in the Aleutian Islands. The fifth and tenth radii connect the holy mountains of China and Machu Picchu. We will discuss these later. The sixth radius takes us to the island of the ancient city of Mumbai and the massive sculpted Elephanta Caves. The seventh radius takes us to the Tower of Magdala that was placed to mark the focal point of the ancient Rennes-le-Chateau alignments in southern France. The eighth radius progresses to another volcanic complex in the pre-Columbian city of Pocalaga. The ancient city remains at the base of the extinct volcano of Mount Royal in present-day Montreal, Canada. 
the ninth radius extends southeast, passes through the site upon which Independence Hall was built, and projects onward to the anomaly of glacial boulders in eastern Brazil. Four identified meridians in Europe and the Rennes Chateau latitude of 45 degrees 55 minutes figure prominently into the Great Lakes biome. The 90 degree offset of the Alais meridian passes close to the center of the Great Lakes sacred geometry. The offset of the Stonehenge meridian runs tangent to the western corner of the Great Lakes Pentagon. Around the Chateau latitude that extends to Crater Lake passes through the southeast corner of the Pentagon at Niagara. One of the Orion reflection lines extends to Around the Chateau while another projects to the petrified forest in Arizona. Extending to the Petrified Forest, the Orion Line intersects another principal line that connects the northern corner of the biome pentagon to other world sites. A line from the Petrified Forest passes through the north corner of the pentagon on a Native American reservation. Then, along the southern tip of Greenland and onward to the Stonehenge World Heritage Site. The line passes near the well-known stone circle in the midst of the site. Stonehenge and a number of other Neolithic sites were co-opted and a series of monasteries and churches were built on many of them. The geometric shape has become known as the Perpetual Choir's Decagon. It was aligned with a site near Cardiff, Wales to project a midsummer's sunrise line. The line from the petrified forest continues onward into the European continent and passes through the center point of the Alais alignments. It extends along the base of the sunrise side of the Matterhorn mountain in Switzerland. And this alignment concludes at the ancient burial mounds of the now submerged city of Faris near Abu Simbel in Egypt. Another lengthy alignment along the Pacific coast of the Americas connects ancient Native American holy sites of Mount Shasta and Crater Lake in North America to major pyramids in Central and South America. Halfway between the North and South American sites is the complex of Tehoaturacan. The Pyramid of the Sun is the largest in this solar-centric complex. The south end of the Pacific Coast alignment seems to have roots in Nazca, Peru. One of the major lines heads northwest to Mount Shasta in Northern California. Another major line projects to the east to the steps of the Sacred Valley within the Sacred District of Machu Picchu. By extending the center line of the Great Lakes geometry southward to Machu Picchu, we find that the plaza at Machu Picchu sits at the northernmost tip of a complex of ancient sites. Machu Picchu was rediscovered by Hiram Bingham in 1911. Also included in this complex of sites are Chocacarero, the pyramidal mounds at Sandor, the sacred mountain of Mount Selkante, due south of Machu Picchu, the steps of Alantetambo, the ancient but still active salt works, the amphitheater 
and possible agricultural laboratory at Moray. The fountains at Temomache. The site of the Temple of the Sun at Cusco. The agricultural steps in the Sacred Valley that align to one of the main Nazca lines. The waterworks of what was renamed Picalacca. And the remaining walls of the massive temple at Raki. South of the Machu Picchu sacred district is the more ancient site of Puma Punku along the shores of Lake Titicaca. The line that complements the petrified forest Stonehenge Ferris alignment, previously discussed, connects to an undersea region in the Atlantic Ocean. This line passes along the much explored and researched plateau of the Seawart Seamount. Passing through this region is the path that connects Machu Picchu and the alignments at Rennes le Chateau in southern France. Machu Picchu alignment crosses the 30 degree north latitude of the Giza Pyramid and passes through the undersea Madeira Plain. Another major set of alignments center at the Great Pyramid of Giza. The pyramid sits 31 degrees east and 30 degrees south. The pyramid is located at the exact center of Earth's land masses. Also along the same latitude we find the sacred mountain of Putuo in China. The Sasanian relief carvings of ancient Persia. And nearby the cube of Zoroaster. Let's return to the Sioux Machu Picchu alignment in the Americas. We find that extending the line northward through the Great Lakes biome and over the polar region takes us to the holy mountains of China. Here there are constellations of four Buddhist mountains and five Taoist mountains. At the top of these constellations west of the Forbidden City we find 53 Yungang grottoes and the Baihang Shan hanging temples. From this point we can trace the constellation of the five Taoist mountains. These include mountains and temples such as the ones at Taishan. Also, from the northern point, we can trace the constellation of the four Buddhist mountains. These include sites such as the Shaolin Monastery and the Longman Grotto near Song Mountain. Due west of Shaolin and Longman sit the cluster of Chinese pyramids at Zion. These pyramids are positioned to one another in a manner similar to the ones in Egypt. Returning to the pyramids at Giza, 78 degrees longitude to the west, we can make a comparison of the two sets that involve the use of Bai. Also, Peter Shampo, author of the Gaia Matrix, points out the application of Phi to the Great Lakes biome. The mystery of these curious alignments continue to unfold. So far, we have only scratched the surface of this puzzle. Every year, new and fascinating curiosities come to the surface as those exploring this and related mysteries share their findings through books and videos we continue to learn.
and continue to ask questions such as what is the significance of these discoveries? Were all ancient civilizations interconnected? Can we use these alignments again and for what? What does the interconnectivity of sites suggest?